gets me a bit late. Highly unofficial, uh, so not an official sketch project. Um, has anyone worked with subdivisions in any form in SketchUp and a sketch of SketchUp? A few, a little bit, yeah. Okay, there you go. Um, so, I created this extension, just been tinkering along. Um, it doesn't really have too many features, doesn't have too many buttons. So a part of my talk is going to be about the process around it and creating topology for organic um, geometry mainly, but also some hard edge geometry. But everything built around subdividing and quad geometry using just um, squares to build up. So, just simply demonstrate for whoever, whoever hasn't actually used subdivision before. Um, start with a simple, I guess this is a hello world of geometry, so it's a box. And um, I'm bring this one down here, this is sub D. And the main button is this one. So you see, create a weird object. Um, increase it until it becomes smooth. If you turn on hidden geometry, you'll see you have a ton of faces. But the key with subdivision here is that I can go back to the original low poly mesh and Smoother, because smoother is better, you know? <laughs> and this is actually the key part, and this is the main part, so thank you very much. I'm in Poland. That is, that is actually the, 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 the major part of the extension itself. Uh, what I'm going to come back to afterwards uh, of just showing the buttons is is the type of geometry, where you use it, and how you create the geometry. Because that's the more important part of this process. This is one step of a, of a bigger process. Um, so, like the other Thomas I just presented, he created a parametric um, uh, extension. Parametric tools has always been something Wanted for sketching. So, this is why you can keep going back to the original low poly mesh and then subdivide it when you need to present it. That's a bit of a weird spaceship thing, I guess. Um, let's just make it a little bit more weirder. We should pick something less abstract. Um, the last part of feature of the extension itself is being able to crease stuff. So I don't want that to smooth and this one to be smooth. We do that. Maybe I'm that completely sharp. Right? Yeah, we want that. That's that's fine art. Down to low poly, you can get a quick preview for it. Um, I might be jumping ahead of a little bit, but my end goal here is to uh, also talk to render engines <laughs> and um, C 
see if I can make them render it high. High poly version like this. Uh, in the red viewport, while well, you can keep the low poly mesh um, with all these mesh. Um, let's go into this tiny cup, a bit more concrete example. Um, very few polygons, makes it really easy to, to edit. And all you need to do is hit subdivide a few times here. You can get smooth, well, smooth edge, this one, we want more, here's more. Love that. Of course, all of this is very taxing to the model itself very easily because you can see how many faces you get instantly because of this. Um, maybe, did I maybe do it like a step too fast early on? Everyone has a good idea of subdivisions now? Yeah? No yeah. complaining? Good. All right. Is it possible? Is it possible to do that, but maybe have it created in enough file? So you could have maybe a low poly model, because the bin this could be really thin, um, whereas a bin model is really low poly so that we can do more. Um, do you mean different level of details? So I guess if I had to say how I would do it manually, I'd probably go copy, new model, paste in place, high poly on the other side, therefore you have the render model from the bin model. Well, you could take. You can take any component that's been subdivided yep. and take it into a different file. So, oh, now that's <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Let's have make this unique. <coughs> and, yeah, uh, you take this into a different file. As it is now with the high poly stuff there, but can just go back to control mesh anytime. So if you need to have different resolutions between different models, that's fine. You just copy your geometry and tabulate. Say you want a little bit because you're having to see the model from a long distance. So that's doable. Let's get rid of this fine notch. Um, so. Some more concrete examples. Got cushion. This is a low poly version. Well, it's a medium poly version. It's actually a bit more polygons than strictly necessary. quickly get, just from two iterations, you get a very smooth surface. Um, but if I need to edit this, if I had to edit every triangle here, it'd be tedious, you know? Um, so I want to go back to this. Now you see it takes a little, little bit of time to jump between the heavily subdivided and I did the control match a lot. So this is where maybe when you work, you probably work at a one level subdivision, a very rough one, and then you incre increase it until, uh, just before you find rendering or anything like that. Um, chair, tiny chair. Um, again, this is what you would model. This consists of very few polygons. And we end up <coughs> so deep. With two iterations, again, it's, it's quite smooth. And you could take it up to four iterations. At that point, 
you probably don't want to go any further, you, you can't. I basically said no. Because <laughs> it would just be too many polygons to push through the um, sketch out graphic pipeline. Um, Does it work backwards? I mean, you take something with lots of polygons. No, it, it always bases it on a low polygon one and allows you to... Is it from a component sort of saved to the low polygon? Yeah, you, you can't take like a super high polygon and make a small one. I mean, there are tools to do that, but... Um, um, yeah, so... I'm about to describe it a little bit later on, but there's a particular set of po uh, topology that works best with this kind of tools. Um, I'm going to show that a little bit later on here now, so how it's best structured. So, this is one of my uh, testers that made a little bench from this sketch here. This is a subdivided um, geometry, and you can see he blocked this out really quickly just from this. Some other people have been playing with characters, you mapping. And um, I guess the best detail I have for how many details I have is it's this model. So this whole model is a huge set of components. You can see here. And all of them are created with simple low polygon control meshes. And it just increased the smoothness of it. And he used a creasing, which I showed early on. Like you have So you can control the sharpness of it because you don't always want to have that perfectly smooth surface over there. But what happened now? Well, you probably didn't see that one, but it was a cycle glitch. <laughs> um, so this is. A little test model I've been using myself. And the subdivision um, algorithm that I'm using here now is, is, is built around having quads instead of triangles. Um, this is ultimately, I want to implement the subdivision library that Pixar and DreamWorks are using, Open Subdiv. And this is also built around quads. And you can see in this uh, model here, you have all the panels built from for little, little ones. Um, this, this is because this is a much easier topology to work with in terms of if I take one of the edges for one of these quads and I go to quad face tools, I can do a ring selection for instance and it follows all the edges along the surface of it. And this is possible only because of, of there is a direction when you have four sides to something. If I had triangles, which is actually underneath there, and you have just triangles, you don't have a specific direction um, to how the geometry flows. But now you can see there's a horizontal and vertical direction to this, so I can do ring selection. I'm going to do that, and now I've selected every other line of this. Say I want to take this edge up here. Now I'm straight away a little bit from sub D, the extensions a little bit, but that's because sub D is the end result to the whole process. And um, 
and, and chords is something that I've been trying to introduce to SketchUp ecosystem for a few years now. Um, and, and chord face tools, which you need to create a geometry. That's been, that's been out there for a few years, but I haven't really been sort of promoting it much in any way. So, um, so the other benefits with this is that it's, it's easier to work with geometry, it's easier to use map. It's easier to, for instance, do stuff like select one of these edges here mm -hmm. and then insert a new loop. So I can add more details very quickly. Um, or I can take <laughs> this one and uh, maybe remove it. Yeah, I don't like that line either. Just remove it. Actually, change the line and head back. And these kind of operations only work um, when you do have ports. And you can see that in other modeling applications um, where they offer that. Um, SketchUp almost does this with sandbox tools. You have all these squares, uh, although they're really triangles just a little soft and smooth um, <laughs> uh, you can do that easily so all these squares and they're not planar because they have a little dividing edge here but the trouble with SketchUp if, if, if we use only that and do smooth then it all disappears. We have no idea which one of these triangles belong to what square. <laughs> so, <coughs> again, Quadface Tools has a tool to converge sandbox pods into Quadface. And I do that click. You don't really see any much change there, but I hit this one. You'll see cast shadow is unchecked. And this is compared to what normal is. So and now take the geometry, smooth it. still knows about all the little squares that's in here. Um, so I can do my little loop selection, I can do my ring selection. I can insert a new edge. And that's the kind of process I've been working up with, with, with Quad face tools here to create these kinds of models, these kinds of geometry. And sub D. Oh, well, I completely screwed up that one, didn't I? Uh, So, just looking at the, um, the shading of the model. <coughs> you can easily jump in to the final result to see the smooth uh, 
uh, geometry. And sorry for my in interrupted silence there, but I really struggle with doing two things at the same time as using a computer and um, and um, talking. That's very difficult. And that's how you can go around and refine the model and get to the final land. But you have to always, always go back to the original low poly version for this and keep working on it. Um, we have some people who have been trying to do some of that. Organic stuff. We even have rich. We even got this face that was created using quad face tools and and using sub D. Um, he used some external tool to do the texturing though, but um, oh, this is just a static image. It's just a render that he sent for me. But yeah, if I had opportunity, I would totally animate this and make him laugh. <laughs> So at some point, I reckon we should have a community competition with that model <laughs> for Christmas and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, um, any questions about workflow or subdivisions? Anything? Yes. I imagine it works very well with terrain models. You know, if you wanted to landscape them in, without. I mean, I've not used subdivision the the, the plugin, and it's very annoying. You, you you sort of want to just move it down and try to adjust it around a building, and suddenly, you know, there's, there's a bit of it sticking up through the floor, and you want to push that down, and you're changing the radius of the. Um, yes. Yeah, and it's. I get really annoyed with it. Um, so this this could work quite well, couldn't it? Really, because you can always just change it back to the no poly and say, right, I need to, that lot needs to go down below the floor level of the building. Because yeah. no, normally you would need a few thousand of faces to create a smooth even yeah. mesh, yeah. and that's after you've pointed onto the model house or whatever it needs to be in there, and you realise. The plans changed, the road changed, something changed the road. They yeah. shouldn't they shouldn't have done that, but they did that anyway. Yeah. And now we need to go back. And if you create as a subdivision surface, you can go back to the original mesh, which might be a couple of hundred faces yeah. at max. Um, it could be a mesh you create from the sort of um, um, <coughs> So this one is currently subdivised evenly. Now that might change in the future once I get to implement open subdiv. Um, but you have tools which right up hands, for instance, that takes a point cloud or existing terrain and create a gridded, like a square gridded surface. So you could take that, for instance, and create a low poly gridded terrain version, yeah. and then. Because his tools support quad faces in many cases, it will actually generate. Sorry, who's, who's this? Fredo. Oh, Fredo, yeah. Yeah. So that should work. Yeah. Um, and then just work with the tools, sort of push pull. Yeah. You can use joint push pull to, to sort of pull up all the um, a group of faces to create a film. But say, say you want to make a terrace in your wall. Landscape, you know, step down and you can, you know, this will, you know, might work. I don't know. 
Would it be used if for terrain modeling or do you do any terrain modeling before you? To be honest, I haven't been modeling much for the last couple of years. Um, I've been programming a lot. Uh, that that car you saw, that's the at most of what I'm doing recently. Uh, but had it been in my previous job, where I was working at architecture office. Um, I would have utilized that to to create trains uh, in that manner. Yeah. With the scatterplot, for instance, it did everything for the theory render um, as the render was happening. Is there a sort of a similar speech that you have where you have subdivide the suits for the rendering? That's what I'm hoping to do. I had a little chat with some of the render engines at last dev camp and they were interested. Um, it's basically mostly on me because I've been too busy trying to finish the project. Um, so, but I'm, I've been reaching out now recently to actually um, talk to render engines and how to set this up. I actually want to figure out a protocol which extensions to mark an object as being special. So whenever the render engines traverse any object and say, oh, hang on, this is a special one. What do we need to do with this? Okay, I need to talk to subdiv, uh, subd. And then the render engine will ask my extension for the polygons for that object instead. And then, you know, I can just pass that on, you know, infinitely smooth. Um, so like Scatter, you actually don't have to clock up your SketchUp viewport with a high quality version of that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something I want to set up as a very generic protocol so anyone can implement that. Somebody else can create a new extension that creates a new spot object and it would automatically work because the render engine spoke that protocol. So that's my hope. Uh, they might not know that yet, but yeah, that's coming. <laughs> Are there different ways of executing the subdivision uh, operation itself? Are you using standard Catmull Clock or what? Yeah, so this is just Catmull Clock. Catmull Clock with Crazy. Um, and that's why the whole workflow is based on quads and all of that. Well, that's not why I chose that because it works with quads, because I previously made quad based tools. Um, because Previously, I used to be a user of, of Visio Max and Rhino, all of that, and everyone has this kind of tools, you know, that understand the surface, and it's really hard to understand the surface as just triangles. Now, Open Subdiv supports Captain Clark increases, but also support Hull, and Hull works on triangles. So, I, with that, in the future, for future releases, it's probably going to be easier to use subdiv as well, even if you don't want to care about the quad topology workflow. Just take any mesh, throw it in there, and have it triangulated with, um, with a whole subdivision. Um, but for the initial release, everything is about the number four. It's all going to be squares. Um, squares, but four is the magic number. Forget three and, and seven and all of that odd numbers. Uh, you want four. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yep. On, on your queue, can you retain the volume as you subdivide it? No. That's, well, hmm. I said that, but the moment I said that, I had an idea. Uh, <laughs> because we know the volume first, and I hit this. I may have a different volume, but I could apply scaling. I could. So you pushing the radius as well as you're pushing the edges. So by default, inherently, you get less volume because what happens is pretty much this. Um, So now I'm doing some manual subdividing. I mean, this is what goes on under the hood here. It takes the faces and splits it up into small ones. And 
Yeah, and it, 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 for each vertex, it looks at the neighbor one and try to average out what happens. is more or less like this. You know? For every time I click this, it's going to get smoother and smoother. But it's going to get smaller and smaller because it's a close volume. Um, but I guess you can counter effect that by scaling it up. If you do want to preserve the exact, exact volume, or maybe the bounding box volume. Yeah, so it's just for like 3D printing, which is done with different light points. Yeah. So the volume changes radically, the practice changes radically. I mean, you're going to see the volume changing more on when the control mesh is, is uh, it's really simple like this. Because it's such a big difference, but in terms of the um, the car, <coughs> you see, it didn't really change the volume that much. Now, well, there's no volume here, but it didn't shrink the model as much because it. It didn't have that extreme difference between the uh, soft, uh, the smooth, and the control mesh. Um, but yeah, there is actually something I had thought of maybe adding some compensation. Just to build it back up again. Any other final questions? It's all working. Right? Yes, it's working. Half a year ago, it's done. But you can't have it. <laughs> it's all mine. I just want to show it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Because uh, I, I set up a company and it's called the legal name, entity name is Thomason's Evil Software Empire. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why you can't have it. Um, might also be a little bit in terms of, of, of legal issues on setting up a uh, vendorship of selling and stuff, but that's minor details. Most of us just to be evil, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, it might be coming soon. It's been coming soon for half a year. Um, it, it's going to continue coming soon <laughs> until it comes. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a big surprise. <laughs> you, you might notice it if you are on the internet, you know, if you hang around on Facebook or Twitter, you might see something mentioned a little bit. Um, anyone else? Final questions? How much will it cost? Um, <laughs> it will not cost a million dollars. It might cost forty dollars. Maybe not. <laughs> um, certainly, if you are already a victim of uh, the evil software empire of already owning Vertex tools, then uh, we might do sixty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do it, right? Yeah, I, I think so. You, you can add a price to it. Um, yeah, so coming soon at some price. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> More expensive, you're going, yeah. Um, anyone else? Fancy dinner? Oh, yeah. Uh, that off, that, that's just one surface, isn't it? Yeah. If you create a surface, yes, but if you create a solid, it's solid. Um, though, yeah, the, currently there is a limitation. You cannot have forks in the, uh, in the geometry. For instance, do that. I use a regular push ball. Um, now I have an internal face. If I try to serve the way that, it's gonna go, no! Because it's evil. Um, that might change in the future with the open subject, because they actually, they are nicer people, and, <laughs> and, and, and you know, they let you do that kind of stuff. Um, so, at the moment, There's one thing I didn't really show too much. I have a custom push ball, but you do the same thing, except it doesn't create the internal phase. And you can do that. Um, I forgot 
properly asked. I, I don't think I actually answered you properly. Sorry. Could, could you show that then? Oh, with that thickness. Whoa. You mean the subdivided result? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you could do it. I, you can open it up now and just do whatever you want to it. The problem is, if you now toggle back, then you've lost everything. But that is a future idea I had of adding modifiers. So, for instance, particularly that thickness modifier that you just add a parametric layer that says add 200 millimeter thickness to this after you subdivide it. Because that would be kind of neat. Um, but that's in sort of further ahead after open subdiv and all that stuff. Um, all this upfront work, even though there's not many buttons in there, but that's intentional. You don't want too many buttons. That's the base for this. And I hope to be able to do more continuous, smaller updates as I go along. We'll see. Or maybe not. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. If the uh, geometry principles and models that you can share that with some other computer and then you start to go back to the. Yep, so you can take that one and so I've got this module and you can paste it. And then, uh, yep, yeah. that works. Oh yeah, yeah, because it's all attached to the uh, definition, and if you save the definition out, it's being attached there. So um, it's all attributes under the hood. So, but if if they don't have um, something, then you know they're just going to get. Well, you, you do have all of that, but. Yes, you can do something in convert to plain mesh and then it doesn't have that intelligence. So if, if you want to create content for yourself and you want to just publish the final result, that's fine. And you can strip it for the control mesh so that people can't go and easily go back to the lower poly version and, and compete with you and be evil. That's, well, I like evil. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, evil question up there. Anything you do to the um, high poly version is lost at the moment. Anything except creasing. Um, yes. So, yeah. So that, that's the current workflow. You do all your work on the low poly one. So you have the cube, standard metric cube, because we're all metric. Sketchup loves metric. We all know that. And. And you go back and forth. Do you lose material? Sorry? Do you lose material if you add it to the finished? Yes. You go back. Well, if you add it, well, it depends yeah, how you add it. Well. Mm, if you add it to the outside. So you see, now I got. I got a material on the faces inside and I have a material on the outside. The material the, the material on the outside, that's going to be fully preserved, but that doesn't have human mapping. You see, it's all that screwed up. Uh, and that comes back to the whole point with the, uh, the shell, the thickness part, because that's another idea I had of having a UV mapping stack so you can apply a planner, a UV mapping gizmo, a a cube, a spherical, or pyramid, or duck shape, or anything. Um, I I tried this a few years ago. It's catch up many extensions of UV mapping, mapping gizmos and stuff like that. Some limitations in the API. I ran on a rant about having features added, and uh, yeah, I found these issues when I joined SketchUp. <laughs> So uh, now it's on my plate to fix that, which my previous self
five years ago complained about. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there is already been improvement into SketchUp API that allows more control over the unit mapping. Um, so hopefully then you can, because uh, you get some distortion sometimes when you do new um, you mapping on the control mesh because it stretches as it goes along. So it is preferable to have the unit mapping done last, you know, on the final stuff. But you want to be able to retain that between everything back and forth. So not now, but in the future. Foreseeable future. Yep. Yeah.